lately the biggest project at about a very small fraction of what it would cost to buy two cabinets, right? Which would be ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for the cabinetry. A couple hundred bucks you have all your cabinetry in the So in the past there have been good products, but they always looked like the cabinets were painted by the time they were finished. The products we're going to talk about today actually leave a factory applied finish using either a brush or a roll. So no spray equipment necessary, nothing fancy. So everything, uh, basically everything that's on the front table here today is what you would use. And um, very simple, most of the stuff you have, either at home or you can pick up here today, actually just ran around picking all this stuff up right now. So, um, very informal, if you have questions, please raise your hand, don't even raise your hand, just ask the question, I'll stop and we'll talk about it, okay? If you need a little more um, information, I can go a little bit deeper into it, all right? So, um, let's just start with the basics where... You have a kitchen cabinet, regardless of what it looks like, or a piece of furniture, um, some trim, whether it's painted or not. You know, start with it. You want to take off all the hardware. The I easiest the way to paint kitchen cabinet is to the bottom. The framework needs to be out, but all the tools are easy to paint when they're actually there. So the first step you want to do, you want to take off all of your hardware. You're probably going to want to replace it anyway. If you're about to refinish all your cabinets, you probably don't like the hardware that's on there anyway. So take off all of your hardware. The next step is you want to make sure that everything is clean, dull, and dry. So some kind of cleaner, Duratex, TSP, Simple Green, any kind of cleaner, especially in the kitchen, you want to make sure you get off any grease, any anything that has been flying around for the last 20, 30 years, whenever the last time was it should put and stuff, right? So once they're clean, clean them. I always recommend that you then rinse it. Again, just take a clean cloth and just wipe it down. Make sure there's no residue behind. Typically, Duratex or Simple Green, you don't need to do that. But just to be on the safe side, you can get all of it, right? Next step, and by the way, if you decide not to take off all of your hardware, you probably want to take it off. Something like frog tape or any blue tape works very well. These are, uh, they have light adhesive, so you can put them off, you don't leave any residue behind. How are you so once you have the, yes? If you were going to remove the hardware and do the places with something, you So, you want to patch up all the holes. Right? Any kind of, any kind of patch like this, or a wood patch, you can fill in. All of your holes, and that goes with the next step. So once you do that, your next step is you want to sand everything. All right, very lightly, so it's just like dusting. You don't have to go crazy and get down to bare wood. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Ladies' Day. I have two more winners in our door prize drawing. Faye Shea is a winner, and Alexandra Weiss. Faye and Alexandra, if you're in the store, please come to the service desk and pick up your prizes. And thanks for joining us today. Right. You don't have to go right away if you want to watch the presentation. You be able to pick um, up anything. Again, you don't need to get this down to bare wood. Sanding block or regular sandpaper. Sanding yeah, blocks are nice serious. because you can get into all the nooks and crannies depending on the shape and size of your, of your wardrobe, right? So this is basically all you need to do. Okay, so you just want to scuff it. And that gives it what we call tooth, or just a little bit of bite. The next thing you want to do is you want to use a tack cloth. Tack cloth is just a cheesecloth that's impregnated with a little bit of uh, varnish. And this will just get up any of the dust. Actually, you can see just that little bit of sand in there, right? So now you have a choice. You can prime everything using something like a 
the do it best wall and wood primer, or a specialty primer for wood, or you can just put two coats of our aqua enamel. And I'm going to talk about each one of these. So the wall and wood primer, if you are priming everything, if you're repainting the entire kitchen, including the walls, this is a great primer because it can be used on sheetrock, it can be used on plaster, it can be used on raw wood, wood that's previously coated, whether it's painted or on it. It can be used on basically anything inside your house. So it's a nice one coat does everything primer, so you don't have to get all individual specialty primers. Right. So that's one option. The other option is that you use two coats of the aqua enamel. So aqua enamel is a little different than typical wall paints or typical kitchen or woodwork products. Now, under the dual pest label, we do make a kitchen and bath and trim finish, but that looks like painted woodwork when you have it. What the aqua enamel is, aqua enamel is an oil-based technology that's encapsulated in a water molecule. I don't know anything about chemistry. Worst class in high school or college. All I know is that it's awesome and it's done. This is my project that is covered in this laundry roll my project. So, uh, it's a, the oil is what gives you that nice smooth finish. The water molecule that's wrapped around that oil-based molecule is what allows us, number one, to sell it in every state in the country, whether it's VOC regulated or not, whether the government regulates the products in the state. And also, it allows it to dry a lot quicker. Some competitive products take up to 16 hours to dry. Aqua enamel dries in one to two hours, where you can start using it after four to six hours. You actually be able to handle these drawers after about two hours. If you wanted to hang them back up, you could. I would recommend that you wait. But you could, if you needed to, or at least move them somewhere else, you could do that after an hour or two hours. And again, that depends on the temperature. If we were doing it in this room, way back there, definitely in an hour it's done. The back half of the room, where it's a little cooler, it might take an hour and a half to two hours. But if you're at least above 50 degrees, this is going to dry in more than two hours. So, um, after you've sanded it, after you've used your tack cloth, all your holes are filled, you have a nice um, finish that kind of looks like this. The rest of it is just painting. What's really nice about aqua enamel, and I'm going to skip the step where we put the primer. And I'm going to cheat also. I never recommend working directly out of the can. You always want to use something else. Typically, I like plastic buckets because once they dry, you just kind of squash them like this and all the paint just pops right off and you peel it out. You can use a metal bucket with a liner, whatever you want. You don't want to work directly out of the can because you're putting contaminants back into the can every time you dip back into the can, right? So you want to keep a fresh can of paint as, often, as long as you can. Any contaminant you want to have in here, and then you can strain that out afterwards if you needed to. But if I'm pulling up all kinds of dirt off of this, I don't want to be putting it back into a brand new can, right? But I'm going to cheat today because I don't want to. I always recommend for aqua enamel that you use a pretty pro extra brush. So a pro extra, uh, this is the only blue bristle brush that Purdy makes. So it's easy if you don't remember the name, you just want the, the Purdy brush with the blue bristles. Okay? The reason why I recommend the Pro Extra is that it is a little stiffer than most other brushes, so it actually allows you to push this product around a lot easier. But you also get a nice, a nice smooth finish. It flows and levels beautifully. And regardless of all the brush coats that I'll try and put into this today, um, they will all disappear by the time the product drops. Right? Uh, pretty brushes, I'll just digress just a little bit. Pretty brushes are made in the U.S. by hand. The little yellow sticker that's on the ferrule here, that's the signature of the woman who made this brush. And I can say woman because 98% of the employees for Purdy are females. Okay. It's have smaller hands and it's easier for them to put the bristles into the brush. This brush is made by hand. I went to the Purdy factory three years ago and they gave us a tour and let us make some brushes and my brush got pulled away. 
It took me almost 10 minutes to make a brush. They threw it away. Uh, you want to take a guess how long it takes a, a, brush, a brush maker to make two one of these brushes? Two minutes. Two minutes? Two minutes. One minute? Close. 52 seconds to make this brush. And six people touched this brush before it goes in a box. So I took almost 10 minutes. They threw mine away. They wouldn't even let me take it home for a dust. That's how quality mine was. Uh, but this brush is designed to apply paint. Everything about this brush helps apply the paint. There is a uh, there's a wedge that's inside, way up here in the ferrule, that actually pushes the paint to its tips. This is where you want all the paint. You want it down here at this end of the brush. You don't want it up here, right? Everything, this is where you work it. So um, the bristles themselves are what are called solid, round. And what that means is that um, you can have a choice of solid round or um, hollow round. Hollow round tips are where you're going to find really cheap $2 brushes. You basically think of a straw, right? You have that hole in the middle of the straw. So you think of a straw that's filled, and that's what these are. The purpose of that is that as this brush wears down, it still has a tip on it. But if you have one that's a round, open filament, as the tip wears off, now you just have a bunch of straws. So then you're going to get all kinds of brush marks. But as this one wears down, you still have the same type of tip all the way through. <coughs> Last year. Yes? How do you choose a size brush? So there's a couple of things that you want to think about when you're choosing your brush. Number one, what is the size of the project that you're doing? And how intricate is it? Okay? So if you're doing a wall, for instance, you typically want to use a two and a half, three, all right, for trimming. But if you're going to brush out the entire wall, then you want to use a four and five, probably. All right, just because it just covers more, more square footage, right? The smaller the area, the smaller your brush. So if you're doing like a little mullions in trimming windows, you probably want to use a one or a one and a half inch angle. Um, something like this, a two and a half is, is pretty good because, you know, if I was going to do the backside, I can get in here or I can do this piece. If I'm much bigger, then I'm overlapping it. Or if I'm much smaller, then I got to do it twice. So it really depends on the size of the project. But for cabinets, a two and a half is what I feel comfortable with. You might want to use a two. And then also the shape of the handle. All right, the wider the brush, typically the wider the handle. One inch brushes usually have what we call um, a rat tail or a pencil handle. It's very small and it allows you to manipulate it easier so you can make all your little twists and turns. And the wider brushes usually have what's called a beaver tail, so it fits better in the palm of the hand. Right. So the angle versus straight is really what you feel comfortable with. If you have a lot of cut work to do, then an angle is best. If you have a lot of flat work, then a flat brush is best. Yes. Do you recommend wetting the brush before? Um, the brush, no. If you're going to use a roller cover, it depends on the roller cover that you use. Some roller covers do require that you wet them first, um, and that helps them absorb more paint. It depends on what the roller cover is made of. So I'm going to talk about doing this with a brush. We can also, if you really wanted to, use a little mini roller. The, the cabinets with, all right? Um, this is actually, this is a quarter inch nap. I would not go any thicker than this. So there's different thicknesses of the texture of the, the fibers that are on here. So this is quarter inch. This would give you a nice mirror-like finish. Hello, everybody, and welcome to San Francisco Hardware's Hard Lady Day. I have three winners to announce in our door prize drawing. Valerie Pelletier, Carolyn McKeon, and Joanna Holland. If you're here at the store, please come to the service desk to claim your prize. Valerie Pelletier, Carolyn McKeon, and Joanna Holland. Please come to the service desk to claim your door prize, and thanks for joining us today. I like doing the little minis for touch-up or over doors, over windows, um, especially if you're using anything from Purdy. So Purdy
Purdy, um, the mini roller covers, the fabric matches what's on the 9 inch roller cover. So if you get a white dub 9 inch and you get a white dub mini, they have the exact same fabric. If you use one of the generic made in China ones, the fabrics don't match anything. So when you go to touch something up, you can always see the difference. If you're touching up with the exact same applicator that you did the rest of the wall with, you'll never notice where you touched up. Or if you have a small area around doors or windows, you're never going to notice it. Yes? So you know how some companies, like in a big box store, they have the same name? Not with Purdy. So if it has a Purdy name on it, it is the best product that we're going to make. We don't make segments of anything in Purdy. So if it doesn't meet the quality level of your Purdy product, it gets thrown away. So you're not going to find this in Job Lot or any box store other than the name Purdy. You will find these at Lowe's, but you're not going to find it under a different name. We do have other brands that we make. Best Leafco, Rubber Set, these are the masters, there's like six different brands that we make, brand names, they're not the same quality level. Though. So if it says Purdy, it's a Purdy. So we're going to cheat, as I said, we're going to work right out of the can. We've already prepped all of our cabinet. Depending on what your door looks like, you always start with the smallest parts that you can, right? So with this one, we're gonna do we're gonna do all the joints first. You don't want to put a lot of paint. I mean, you notice I don't have a lot of paint on this. If this was a six-panel door, or this had any kind of other design in it. You're going to do all the designs first, and then, the, then your flat areas, right? Don't do more than what you can, don't get too far ahead of yourself. So if this was, you know, five or six boards across, I would only do two at a time, right? So then we're going to do each one I'm going to do this without... I would lay these down, typically. But what's nice about aqua enamel is that you can lay this on pretty heavy and it doesn't drip or run. So some of our competitors have to apply very thin coats. Otherwise it runs all over the place. The only drawback to aqua enamel, really, is the fact that since it is an oil-based product that's encapsulated in the water, it does have that alkyd smell. Do you really want to use it in a well-ventilated area or make sure that you open the windows after you're done or whatever? So this way you don't have that smell just sitting in the house for a while. Um, I did all my six candle doors last weekend. And my wife complained when she came home that she could smell it for the next two days. So. Snow, so, I can uh, so your first coat might look like this, all right? If you want to really get particular, I can make this look really nice, but I would typically put a second coat over this anyway. Right. You can recoat this after about two to four hours. Whenever you're, whenever you're painting, you always want to finish typically top to bottom unless the woodwork is going left to right or sideways and you're going to want to go in one direction. You don't want to go across if it's going up and down and vice versa. Right? You want everything to, to flow in the same direction. Um, I'm not going to touch this again. And we will just let it dry out this way. If you keep going over it, what's going to happen is as this product starts to dry, again, because it's an oil wrapped around, um, water wrapped around an oil, the water is starting to evaporate off. Now each time I touch it, I'm going to stop pulling some of that oil, and now it's going to stop actually lifting. So once you apply it, you just let it sit. Regardless of how pretty it looks right now, we're going to let it sit, we're going to let it dry a couple hours, then we can go back and we can put a second coat on it. So 
So once this is done, uh, and we have two coats, and I guess I didn't bring the finished one. Uh, these in the paint department, if anyone wants to see what it looks like. Uh, Kathy did, um, she did a sample a couple of months ago. Um, once this is done, it's dried for a couple of hours. Just let it sit somewhere, or if you want to stop putting the, the hardware back on it, you can do that. And it's ready to use after about six to eight hours. I would typically leave the doors off for at least 24. Um, there's yeah. something that is called blocking, where if you close a product against itself, all right, so if you're using a typical latex paint and you close the door or you close the window, then you go to open it and you hear that popping sound or the ripping sound, like Velcro ripping itself apart. That doesn't happen with this because once the water base product evaporates out and you have an oil and that blocking doesn't happen with oils. But I would still let this sit for about 24 hours before I went into the doors again. Okay. After about 30 days, and that's about the curing time for all paints, whether it's oil or latex, thank you. After about 30 days, um, you can do anything you want to this. This is scrubbable, and this is actually bonded to the wood now. Okay. Um, this has uh, twice the pencil strength of our competitors, which means you can pretty much hit this with a hammer and it's not going to break this product off. It may make a dent in the wood, but the paint itself is not going to come So, extremely durable, dries very quickly, and I'll pass this around. I mean, that's just one coat that Captain put on that. Again, she did that about a month ago. It's the exact same doors. These are all of her doors, Kathy from the paint department. Um, is, is there a difference in yes. the durability between set and semi gloss gloss? So we do have three different sheening levels in aqua enamel. All three that you mentioned, satin, semi gloss, and gloss. The durability itself, no. Not in this product. Um, actually, once you get above a satin finish, the durability level is about the same. It really it comes down to the sheen level. How shiny do you like it? That one is the satin finish. Yep. That's the satin finish. So they have the satin and the semi-gloss here. They do not stop the gloss. Gloss would be a special order, but if you wanted it, it's a real high gloss. Uh, most people these days are satin or a semi-gloss the most popular finishes. Right. Yes? Is the semi-gloss easier once, um, once you're up into these sheen levels, satin, semi gloss or gloss, they're all very they're very easy to clean, very similar, uh, especially with this product because it has such a good finish. Um, number one, it stays to stick to it. So it's very simple. You can wash with Dawn and Dove dishwasher detergent and get just about anything. Oh. Yes? If, if your chemist had like the polyurethane on it or whatever and you want to paint them like white, do you have to sand off all for you? So we can go through the steps that I mentioned in the yes. beginning, okay, lightly sand, make sure it's clean, all right, yeah. you can lightly sand it, this product is actually made to go directly over a polyurethane finish without having to sand it. Oh, cool. I always prefer to sand just to be on the safe side. But it's not necessary with this product. What would you think about using it like for like sword trim in the door? Absolutely. So um, right now, this product is labeled for interior use only. However, um, we've done extensive testing over the last 12 months um, since we launched this last year, and we are going to relabel this as an interior exterior trim product with absolutely no change to the formulation of the product. So when we launched it, we just hadn't finished all of our testing for exterior use. So this interior product can be used on exterior doors, shutters, and anything like that. Just the way it is. So that's the quality level, yes. So when you say clean it, are you talking like using a degreaser or you're just wiping so it with some water? It really depends on how it's out. Okay, really, really. You're Italian like my parents. There's grease all over the place, right? So, uh, any kind of simple green, any kind of like household degreaser, Duratex, TSP, anything like that, just to wipe them down. So you want to make sure that you get rid of any kind of grease. 
That's that's the most yeah. important step. Because nothing will stick to grease. You might cover it at first, but eventually it's going to come off. So make sure it's clean. The sanding part, if you want to skip that step, you can. Because this product will bond directly to the polyurethane finish, the varnish, whatever's on there. I like to sand just to be on the safe side. Only because I have to use that five years of painting experience that I have. Um, this one, uh, was this one I grabbed? I just grabbed something off the shelf. Um, this is just medium grip. So about 120, 100. I wouldn't go anywhere like into the 80s. That's too harsh. So I'd stay somewhere around, you know, 100 at the max if you're going to go by number sizes. Um, but a medium or a fine is, is absolutely fine. Um, so you were asking about furniture earlier. With the furniture, you can use the primer. And again, for those of you that came in after the fact, if you're going to do raw wood and you're going to prime it, um, I recommend the Do Best Wall and Wood Primer. There are other manufacturers that make wall, um, sorry, wood primers specifically. <laughs> Typically, wood primers allow the raw wood to bleed into them, so you might see discoloration into the primer film. You can do one of two things. You can wipe it down with a little denatured alcohol, and I'll pull the rest of that out, or you can put another coat over it. But most of the time, you can just paint right over that, especially if you're using the aqua enamel, because the aqua enamel is the oil-based product, and it's not going to all that tan and out any further. So even if you get discoloration into the primer, you just like an aqua enamel over it will eliminate funny something. It's yes. a very odd yeah. sound. It's completely yeah. Clean up. Good question. Because this is a hybrid product, so it's a, again, it's an oil-based paint that's wrapped around with uh, water-based paint, right? While it's wet, so this brush right now that I'm using, the brush that I'm using right now, I would use just soap and water. All right, actually, just a little warm water in the sink. I wipe things out every time, because then I have to scrub the sink. But um, just a little warm water, uh, that's it. Now, once it dries, before it's fully cured, it's now an oil-based product. So now you're going to have to use a little paint thinner, right? So try and get it while it's wet, and then it'll come right up with some water. Okay. That was a good question. I should have brought that up at the beginning. So because it is a hybrid, you actually can clean up with water at first. Once it dries, you treat it like an oil-based paint. Okay. This finish, once it's dry and hard, you don't need to do anything else to it. You don't have to put any kind of protector over it. You don't have to put polyurethane, anything like that. It is the finish. Just as that board that went around, that's 30 days old. Any other questions on this? Yes? Um, I don't know. They're doing it right now, so I don't know where they're going to put it. What's that? Uh, I was asking if there's a YouTube presentation of how to. All of today's presentations are being recorded. They'll be on the video, on the YouTube channel for the store, Demer Scott of Hardware. All right, so now I'm a YouTube star. Yes. Right. I well, promise I'm not going to be for I just want to announce that we'll be having a presentation starting in just a moment <laughs> at 12 noon. Rick Scoglin will be doing Listen, a presentation <laughs> on backyard birding. Rick Scoglund, uh, that will be in the Garden Center, which is at the end of aisle four, and that will be starting in just a couple of minutes. I also have some door prize winners to announce. Ellen Hunt, Regina Davey, and Elaine Sprague. If you're in the store, please come to the service desk. All right, so you get two prize. minutes. Ellen Hunt, yeah. 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 and thanks for joining us today. All right, so if you want to stay around and listen to Backyard Birding, that's uh, the next one. If you have any more questions for me, I'm going to go to the paint department, and I'll be happy to answer any other questions.